Now the purpose of this video is to go over the project settings and how we can set defaults for ourselves. So when we first open Reaper, it should look a lot like this, as I haven't changed any of the project settings yet. And to see the project settings, we can go up here and hit this toolbar button, or use the keyboard shortcut, Alt Return on the PC, Option Return on the Mac. That opens up our project settings, where we can set up just the settings that work with this project. As you can see, you can set up the sample rate, our tempo, time signature, and project time base, and a bunch of other tabs with settings we're not gonna go through in this video. The purpose of this video is to show you what this button does to save our project settings as a default. So let's change our tempo, our time base to time. Let's also change our start measure to minus one to give us two bars of accounting. And we'll save this as a default project settings. Now, if we open a new project, it's set up exactly like that with a two bar count in, our tempo changed, and our project time base set to time. So every time we create a new project, it's gonna start off this way. Let's put these back for now to the defaults. And if we save it as a default and create a new project, it's gonna start that way. But besides the project settings in this dialog, there's a lot of other things we could change in Reaper that will be affected by this setting. So right up here is our timeline, and we could see it's bars and beats and time. But we could change it by right-clicking, go down here, maybe use minutes and seconds, and that's our new timeline. And if you prefer to work this way, just open this back up and save it as a default project settings. Now when we create a new project, it's gonna start off like this. Or my personal favorite is to use measures and beats, but use the minimal setting. And also turn off our time by going down here to secondary time unit and setting it to none, which makes this look a little cleaner as the time in our timeline could still be seen over here as these settings are separate. And again, we could save it as a default project settings just by saving it right here. Create a new project. And it starts exactly like this. And if we want to create that two bar count in, just change this back to minus one, save it as a default, create a new project. And it starts just like that with a two bar count in before bar one. This is also useful for our toolbar buttons. Notice our metronome is turned off. We could turn it on. We could right click it to view our settings. Maybe change the counting to one bar and turn it off for playback and add a counting for recording. And all this will be saved if we save our default project settings. Just save it again, make a new project. And it starts out with the metronome turned on and those settings we set up. So that's saved with a default project settings as well. And it'll work the same way for our crossfades on and off or anything in the toolbar button, including locking. By default, if we turn locking on, it's just gonna lock our time selection. But we could change this to anything we prefer. Personally, I like to lock the left and right movement. So if I have some items, and we turn on locking, we can't move them left and right accidentally. Of course, we could turn this off to adjust it if we want. But again, that setting can be saved as the default project settings. So we create a new project. It starts off with this option by default. And this will also work with some of our options. I like to use trim content behind media items when editing. This is off by default, but if I turn this on and save it over here, create a new project, it's gonna start off with that setting on, which is also useful for recording into lanes. By default, it's not gonna add lanes when we overlap our recording. If we want lanes, we could turn it on here 
and have them be on by default. Just hit this button, create a new project, and by default, it's going to add lanes. Or if you don't want lanes, but you do want to use tape mode, turn this on, open up our project settings, and hit this button. Now, if we create a new project, it's going to start off not using lanes, but using tape mode. So it's very useful for our options menu, but also for our toolbars. Like for snapping, if I right click, it opens up our snapping. There's an option over here to snap to grid at any distance, which means if I create some items, they're going to snap by default right to the grid. Nothing in between. We could hold down the shift key to bypass it or turn off snapping so we can move it off the grid. But if you want more flexibility, we could turn off this option to snap to grid at any distance. And now this is still going to snap to our grid. But we can still move it between the areas and it's only going to snap when we get really close, which could be a problem if this item is a bit too short it's going to snap to that item. So instead, I also like to turn off this option, which is going to snap media items to nearby items. So with this off, it's only going to snap on the grid and not to other items, which is more useful if we turn off this option. But again, all of it could be saved right in here by saving the default project settings. And if we create a new project, it's going to start off with these options turned off. This is also useful with the option down over here to show effects inserts in the track control panel. If we turn this on and we create some tracks, you can see our effects over here. Let's add an EQ and a compressor. Now we can see our effects over here on the right side. And that's an option to turn on and off. But it's also going to be saved if we save our default project settings. So if we save this, create a new project, by default, we're going to see our effects on the right side, like this. And it's also useful for most of the other options in the options menu, including pre fader track metering, along with auto scroll and continuous scrolling. So those options will also be saved right over here by saving the default project settings. Now it's important to note our preferences are completely separate from our project settings. So anything we change in here will be system based, not based on the project or saved with the default project settings. But I should mention this option over here in the project tab will override everything we just did right over here. When creating new projects, use the following project file as a template. So if we add a project to here, every time we create a new project, it's going to use that file and its settings instead. So it overrides everything we did right in here. But if you don't want to set up a separate project to do that, we could just do it right from here. Every time you have a setting that you prefer to start with, just open up the project settings and choose it over here. And every time we create a new project, it's going to start off just like that. So that's pretty much it. That's the default project settings in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks.
Tango boys, let's go.